This is a momentous verdict. It is also a testament to the courage and perseverance of George Floyd's family and many others in calling for justice. I think this verdict suggests that it is possible to achieve human rights that apply to everybody equally. It is possible to see racial equity inside of our understanding and implementation of human rights. There wasn't a real acknowledgement in the trial of the systemic racism that licenses people like former police officer Derek Chauvin to behave the way he did. The battle to get cases of excessive force or killings by police before the courts, let alone win them, is far from over. This case has also helped reveal, perhaps more clearly than ever before, how much remains to be done to reverse the tide of systemic racism that permeates the life of people of African descent. What we're talking about when we ask um, for human rights to be centered, when we ask for anti-racism to be centered, is this understanding that um, part of justice is accountability, part of justice is reparations, part of justice is creating spaces where communities of people of African descent are able to access public goods and services and accommodations, including policing, without threat for their lives. And so I think for a lot of us, um, the relief we feel in this moment that the easiest decision in the world, that, that this was in fact murder, has been made, is also um, merely the preface to the work that we need to do in order to really meaningfully see human rights available to people of African descent on an equal and equitable basis. The entrenched legacy of discriminatory policies and systems, including the legacies of enslavement and transatlantic trade, and the impact of colonialism must be decisively uprooted in order to achieve racial justice and equality.